Hey guys, hope you're holding up well and doing okay. Today I'm going to walk you through how to do the module on Valve. So let's navigate our way to that one. If you haven't already, go to content at the top. Find service e-learning on the left side here. And we're going to go down to day 12. Hard to believe we're that far along. And then you're going to see Valve's advanced right here. So we'll get started on this. So to introduce all this, <clears throat> it says the valves are located in the cylinder head and are made to open and close off the intake and exhaust ports from the cylinder. Four stroke engines need at least one intake valve and one exhaust valve per cylinder. I will say it's becoming very common to have two of each on most engines. When open, valves must provide as little resistance as possible to the flow of gases either in or out of the cylinder. Um, when closed, valves must perfectly seal the intake and exhaust ports from the cylinder. This is the secret right here to making a really fast, really powerful engine. Um, you want to be, get air in and out of the engine as efficiently as possible. So there's a lot of engineering going on to make valves flow really, really well. Then goes on to say, the diameter of the intake valve is usually larger than the diameter of the exhaust valve. Because the volume of intake charge is always greater than the volume of exhaust gases. Um, one way I like to think about it is breathing through a straw. It's always easier to breathe in through a bigger straw than it is through a smaller straw. So click on the valve to start the animation. So on the left side here, click on the valve. And now you're going to see everything start moving. So we got our intake valve over here, exhaust valve over on the right side. And you'll see the camshaft as it goes around opening and closing those. And we'll move on to the second one. And it's going to have us ID some parts here. Uh, first of all, the cylinder head is going to be any of the red part. And our camshaft is going to be one of these two camshafts up on top. We'll go on the one with the blue dot right here. Now the engines you guys took apart are Honda VTEX. Those had a single overhead cam, so they only had one camshaft that was actually controlling both valves off one camshaft. We've got our intake camshaft on the left side here. Oh, I'm sorry, intake valve. Look at that closer. Intake valve over on the left, and then our exhaust valve over on the right. Go on to the third one. Evaluate each of the following statements as either true or false. A four-stroke engine needs at least one intake valve per cylinder. That's going to be true. We've got to get air in. The valves are located in the block. Well, that's false because they're in the cylinder head here. Oops, false. A four-stroke engine needs at least one exhaust valve. That's also true to let the exhaust out of the cylinder. And the diameter of the exhaust valve is usually smaller than the diameter of the intake valve. Well, that's true, and they actually said it opposite at the top here. Up top, they said the intake valve was bigger, so the opposite would be a smaller exhaust valve. And we'll go on to the second one at the top. So what you can do now is flip this little switch left and right and see the difference of how that valve spring keeper comes out. So we'll read how this works. Valve keepers ensure the valve stem remains secure to the valve spring retainer. Valve keepers are held in place by one or more grooves in the valve stem. These pieces right here. When the valve spring forces the valve head downwards against the valve seat, the valve keepers are tightened around the valve stem by their angled design. And they're talking about this right here. So they basically get wedged in place as the top of the valve is pushed upon. Now this is something we were not able to take apart in class, so this is a great exercise to see what it's like to take the cylinder head apart. The cam lobe is usually positioned off the ax center axis of the valve lifter and the valve stem. This way the valve lifter and the valve are rotated when the lobe, cam lobe moves over the valve lifter. This is done in order to achieve even wear and even heat distribution. In order to remove the valve and valve spring, the valve keepers must first be removed. Click on the button next to the close-up to remove the valve keepers. So we already did that, but we'll do it again. 
So there's everything going back together. And then we'll take it apart. So to take it apart, you'd have to push down on this, and that would allow you to take those keepers out. And they have a special uh, little fixture, a little machine that assists in doing that. So now we're able to take those keepers out. These are tiny. They're like the size of a pencil eraser. They, they are not big at all. And we'll go to the second one. Click on the button next to the close-up view to install the keepers. So we'll do the opposite here. So the keepers go back in, and it's this retainer that just kind of wedges them in place. So it's not much holding that all together. We'll go to number three. What must you do to remove the valve keepers? Well, to remove them, you're going to have to push down on the retainer right here. So we are going to have to compress the valve spring. So you got to push this down. That lets you take those out. And we'll go on to the fourth one. How many valve keepers does a valve have? <clears throat> it's got to have at least two, one on each side. So we'll type in two. And we got it right. And we'll go to the fifth one. Find the following components in the close-up. So the valve keeper is going to be this guy right here. It's a little hard to see. It's the black part. But that's our valve keeper. <clears throat> and it wedges in place to this groove right here. And then the valve spring retainer is going to be this top part right there. We'll go. All right, now we're going to do number six. Uh, it says here you can see a close-up of the cam lifter and valve. What do you notice? The valve spring rotates. Well, the spring actually stays right where it's at. It does not move, so that's going to be false. The lifter rotates, and we see that green dot going round and round up here in a second. So that's true. And the valve's rotating. You can see it down here now. You can see that green dot up top. So these two pieces are locked together and rotating, and it's the spring that stays stationary. And now we'll go to number seven. Why does the valve rotate? Um, it is going to be not to improve lubrication because everything is getting oil. It's actually going to be to ensure even wear and even heat distribution. And now we'll go to number three at the top. So the valve, um, exhaust valves get hotter than intake valves because the exhaust gas is hotter. Exhaust valves may reach a temperature of around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit while intake valves may reach temperatures of around 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. For this reason, exhaust valves are often made of a different material than intake valves to withstand the additional heat. Intake valves are made of chromium silica silicon steel. Exhaust valves are made of chromium nickel steel. In order to reduce valve head wear, the valve face is plated with a layer of hardened steel, usually cobalt chrome alloy. So this time we're going to click on the valve components. So we've got the valve face down here. We've got the valve head. We've got the valve stem on this part right here. And then up at the top, we've got the groove for the keeper. We'll go to number two. So we're going to start the engine with the key, and we're going to look at how hot the intake valve gets. So this one over here. And grab the key in the middle, rotate that, and you're going to see the temperature goes all the way up to, starting to slow down, about 600 degrees Celsius. And if we look at this, it's 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So how hot does it get? We're going to put 600C. We got it right. And we'll go to number three here. It says, read and evaluate each of the following statements as either true or false. Intake valves are made of chromium silicon steel. And if we look up here, intake valves, chromium silicon. So that's true. Exhaust valves are made of chromium nickel up here. Chromium nickel. So that's also true. The valve face is plated with a layer of cobalt chrome alloy. And it says the valve face cobalt chrome alloy, so that's also true. 
and intake valves get hotter than exhaust valves. Well, that's going to be false. It's the other way around. And we'll go to number four at the top here. So sodium-filled valves, something that's become common. Sodium-filled valves can reduce operating temperatures by 80 to 100 degrees Celsius, 176 to 212 Fahrenheit. So that's quite a bit when compared to regular valves. Sodium is a metal that becomes liquid at 97 Celsius or 208 Fahrenheit. When the valve opens and closes, the liquid sodium begins to circulate. The movement of the sodium transports heat from the valve head to the valve stem. So let's look a little closer about what they're talking about here. So click on the sodium filled valve. It's going to be this red one right here. And we'll go to number two. Start the engine with the ignition key, and what do you notice? So we'll get that started, grab the key down here, turn that. So right now it's a solid, and now it's turned to a liquid. Turning to a liquid as it heats up. And you're going to see that instead of it going up to 600 degrees, it's actually only going to about 500 degrees. So it's able to stay a lot cooler now. So the sodium in the valve causes the valve to operate at a higher temperature. Well, no, that's false. It's actually a lower temperature now. When the sodium-filled valve heats up, the sodium becomes liquid. That's true. The temperature begins to rise. Well, that is true. When the engine is cold, the sodium becomes solid. That's also true. So it lowered it quite a bit here just by changing properties. And we'll go to number three. At what temperature does the sodium become liquid? Let's watch that again and find out. So we'll turn it off. It's red. It's red. It's about 100 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty low. So 100 Celsius. It changed color. And here we can see it's become a liquid, so it changed its properties. And now we'll go to number five. Now, number five talks about valve guides and valve seals. And it goes on to say the valves move up and down in the valve guides. And you're going to see the valve guide right in here. And then you're going to see the valve that goes up and down inside of it. And then we got the little seal on top. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, the valve guides are pressed into the cylinder head. They are made of cast iron, a copper, zinc, aluminum alloy, or sintered brass. All these materials are good at transferring heat are wear resistant and have good friction properties. The functions of, a, of valve guides are to guide the valves during opening and closing, positively center and locate the valve so it makes proper contact with the valve seat, and transfer the heat from the valve to the cylinder head. So it's got three main jobs that it's doing. Valve stem seals are rubber seals that are clamped on the top of the valve guide beneath the valve spring. When the valve seals are worn, oil consumption occurs. So it's going to have us click on the following components. We've got the valve seal right here that keeps oil from getting pulled into the cylinder. We've got the valve guide that is pressed into the cylinder head. And then we've got our valve that's going to go up and down to allow air into the engine and exhaust back out of it. We'll go to the second one. When you start the engine with the ignition key, you can see the accelerated wear process of the valve seal. What is the consequence of a worn, a worn valve seal? So we'll start this up. We're going to watch the picture here. And you can see how it got brittle and kind of cracking, dried out. And that's going to be a case where it doesn't seal as well anymore. And when that happens, we're going to get increased oil consumption. So oil is going to be able to make its way past there and then get into the engine. I'll go to the third one. What is the function of the valve seal? It is going to be to keep oil leakage from past the valve stem to a minimum. Go to number four. What are the functions of the valve guide? That is going to guide the valves during opening and closing. That one there, that's true. Positively center and locate the valve. 
Don't see that one listed here. Um, that is going to transfer the heat from the valve to the cylinder head and transfer heat valve to the cylinder head, so that's also true. Um, can find the valve spring, so that's going to be false. And provide a seal between intake and exhaust channel and the valve control chamber. There we go. Provide a seal between the intake and exhaust channel. I read that wrong there. To uh, and the valve control chamber. That's also true. There we go. And now for number six at the top. Valve seats. When valves close, they seal against and are supported by the valve seats. And what they're referring to is this part down here. We got the valve and we got the valve seat. Valve seats are stirred, sturdy sturdily made to withstand the repeated hammering of the valve closing against it. In cast iron cylinder heads, seats are machined into the head, which is called integral type. In aluminum, which is this one's going to be, on aluminum cylinder heads, separate valve seats are used, which is called insert type. These can be attached in various ways, fused, crimped, or pressed into the cylinder head. Uh, click on the following components. So we've got the valve face right here. And then we've got the valve seat going around it. There we go. Click on this part. Go to the second one. Click on the close-up of the exhaust valve. So that's going to be this guy over here. And what you're going to see is the difference in contact area that it has because it needs to transfer more heat. And then we've got the intake valve on the other side. Why must the face of the exhaust valve have a larger surface area? Uh, it's going to be so more heat is transferred when the exhaust, when, I'm sorry, when the valve is in contact with the valve seats. So more contact area to transfer more heat. Now we'll go to the fourth one. Read and evaluate each of the following statements as either true or false. Separate valve seats can be pressed into the cylinder head. Well, that's true. We see it right here. An aluminum cylinder head has separate valve seats. That's true. A cast iron cylinder usually has machined valve seats. That's going to be true. And separate valve seats can be screwed into the cylinder. Well, that's going to be false. They don't screw them in. Now we'll go to number five. And now we're going to find all these different parts. So if you follow along with me, we've got the valve seat right here that is typically pressed into the cylinder head. We've got the valve keeper. It's going to be up at the top here, the little wedge-shaped piece. Valve spring retainer. That's going to be the very top part. The valve spring, all these little green dots here. We've got the valve seal to keep the oil out. Then we've got the valve guide to keep that valve going up and down straight. And then finally, we have the lifter. That's going to be this part right here. All right, that was a long module, but I hope you guys understand how this cylinder head works a little better. And we don't take them apart in class, so this is the best way that we can go through kind of how all this works. It's a lot of pieces, and it's a time-consuming process that has to be done really accurately. So we don't get to it, but um, I hope this kind of clarifies a few things for you. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for getting this done.